Kenyan Supreme Court Judge Justice Philip Tunoy, who is accused of receiving a 200 million shilling bribe from Nairobi Governor Evans Kidero, says he has never met Kidero nor his accuser, Geoffrey Kiplagat. Tunoy, who says he has not been formally informed of the allegations against him, is attributing the current tribulations to the succession wars for the position of Chief Justice and Deputy Chief Justice and the composition of the highest court in the land during the 2017 general election. KTN's senior reporter Rita Tinina spoke to Justice Tunoy, one of the longest serving judges in Kenya who has served under 10 chief justices. Rita began by asking Tunoy if he has ever met his accuser. I've never met him personally or at close range. When I was informed that he lives in Chepkorio, I recall that I've done harambees in schools and in churches in Chepkorio or in his home area. Otherwise, apart from that, he may have seen me in Eldore town where I live. He may have seen me walking in the streets of Nairobi but I've never shaken his hand. I've never seen him, personally. Your accuser has described your office quite elaborately. How is that so if you, you haven't met him? The office is open. Even during my absence, up country or in, if I go and leave, it is mandatory for the offices of judges, of chambers of judges to be open. Again, I hear matters here in chambers. Certain applications in the Supreme Court are heard by judges in chambers. And we allow advocates to come with their parties, to come with the litigants. So it is possible he's been, he has accompanied some advocates into my chambers because I'm told he knows how he has described my chambers. What of the governor of Nairobi, Evans Kidero? I've never met Kidero physically. I've not even greeted his hand. I'm sure he must have seen me in court or anywhere, but I've never been close to him. I've never spoken to him. And I've seen him on pictures, on TV. And that is the furthest the relationship has gone to. The Kidero case was heard by seven judges, all the judges of the Court of Appeal. We wrote one judgment, and it was read in portions by us. That is, one judge read about four pages, another one five pages, another one four, and that is all. We wrote one judgment, all of us, and signed it all of us together. It was unanimous. The Chief Justice is set to convene a sitting over the allegations facing you. Have you been formally informed about them? Do you know what exactly you're up against? A apart from what I've seen in the media, no one has served me with the allegations made against me by Geoffrey Kiplagat. The Judicial Service Commission, nor the Chief Justice, has not given me any report. He has not asked me about my side of the story or what I had to say about the allegations. You have risen through the ranks in the judiciary. Um, you have survived the purge on the judiciary back in 2004. That was known as the radical surgery. Four years ago, you survived vetting by the judges and magistrates board. Have you ever received a bribe in your career in the judiciary? I've never taken a bribe in my life. And such allegations as this have never been made against me nor my family. And 
each one of us shed tears because the accuser came from nowhere we owe him nothing and what he's saying looks outrageous to the extreme the amount of money you are alleged to have received in this bribe a colossal amount of money i must say i cannot imagine in my mind that i can make such an amount of money in my life furthermore i cannot envisage any judge remaining here for a single day even if a fraction of that amount is given to him or her when i retire from the bench after 30 years i will be entitled to a lump sum of 22 million shillings and that is all which i am worth after 30 years on the bench when i joined the judiciary i have we used to earn 22000 shillings a month it went up up to this time a judge of the supreme court is earning something like 750000 shillings it is impossible to save much i have in the bank a total of 15 million shillings that is all i hope to take that home and retire on it and live on my goats and sheep why you why now i mean what do you make of all this what could be behind it who could be behind it the cause of the current tribulations which i'm undergoing are caused by the issue of succession within the rank of the chief justice deputy chief justice and me the senior member of the supreme court the position and the membership of the supreme court in 19 in sorry in 2017 during the forthcoming general elections is worrying so many people who are the judges who may hear the petition in the presidency case which judge leans towards this group the people who want me to be uh, out of the judiciary know that my the judgment of the retirement case is coming on 29th January if it is successful then i'll stay in the judiciary for quite some time and those ones who are aspiring to take over from me are not happy about it and i have been reliably informed that on saturday and sunday a group of lawyers and two judges whom I will not name have been coaching the accuser Geoffrey Kiplagat in one hotel and they have been drafting and correcting the affidavit which he swore against me there is also the question of the competition between judges from the old rift valley province who are wanting to take over from me there are about 9 of them and some of them even would wish me dead so that they take over from me <laughs> some have refused to greet me since i refused to retire at the age of 70 <laughs> one particular one 
<laughs> he is really very d disturbed and he told me that uh, I would regret if I remained <laughs> beyond the age of 70. And this is exactly what is happening. <laughs> You're currently pushing to have uh, your stay on the bench extended after you attained the retirement age of 70 last year. Um, these allegations, how do they impact uh, if you survive or if the judgment on retirement is in your favor? Um, how does this impact on your sunset uh, years in the judiciary? On my own part, I would not want to remain in the judiciary if I feel that I have uh, disobeyed my oath of office. Because a judge has got a lifestyle to follow, he's got an oath to protect, and he's got personal integrity to look after. So when these allegations were made, I was really perturbed, and I would not hesitate to leave the judiciary immediately if my accuser can prove an iota of my wrongdoing or my disobedience of the oath.